Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beatos. So this is a lesson that I've wanted to do that is related to what I think is the most important thing that most people, beginners, intermediates, and more advanced people need to be able to do, but typically are not great at doing it. And it's string muting. Now there's a lot of types of string muting, and this is really what separates what I think are professional players or session players from your average players. And string muting is important for any level, for beginners, everything. I've touched upon it in a couple other videos, but not really in depth. So I wanna talk about different types of string muting that you should be able to master, okay? Uh, I wanna start with power chords. We're gonna go from uh, power chords, we're gonna talk about octaves, we're gonna talk about single notes, and we're gonna talk about left and right hand muting. This is something to practice and get good at. Honestly, People that can mute well, are they always sound like they're more professional players. And I would typically, as a producer, if somebody couldn't mute the strings properly, I would actually tape the strings that didn't need to be played so we wouldn't get extraneous noise because I got to the point where uh, people, if they couldn't avoid those or mute, it just got to be where... You couldn't have any extraneous strings, especially if you're playing with distortion, you can't have any extraneous strings ringing out. I wanna talk about power chords first, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about root five power, or root six power chords, meaning the root is on the sixth string or the low E. So I'm playing an A power chord or an A five chord here at the fifth fret. Now, I'm playing the notes A, E, A, so I have an octave in there. But what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm muting these other, these strings I'm muting but I'm hitting all the strings. So the only notes that you're hearing ring are the three notes that I'm playing. So these three strings are being muted by my index finger lightly touching them. Now, it, to be able to do that, you have to have your finger angled so that it touches it with enough pressure to mute it, but so with not too much pressure, so it doesn't actually fret the note. Because there, that note is being fretted. If I lift up on it just a little bit, now it's not being fretted. Fretted, not being fretted, okay? What you don't want to do is, you don't want to hear that because that's going to sound like a mess. There, 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 I can hear that high note. So you have to get just the right angle on this part of your index finger to mute those strings. Now, when I go to a root five power chord, meaning that the root is on the A string, so this would be a C5 chord. Now, I'm doing the same thing with the B and E string, but I'm also, with the index finger, I'm lightly touching the low E string so, so that it's muted. And what you wanna be able to do is go from here You want to be able to play those kind of power chords because are played in pretty much every rock song. There's also a root four power chord. Root four power chord is with the root on the fourth string, so on D. This would be an F5. It's a different voicing from that F5. Now, you're going to say, well, how are you muting that low E string? Well, as you can see, my middle finger now is muting the E string. My index finger is muting the A string, and then my pinky is muting the high E string, right? So there's a lot of different muting going on. We haven't even talked about muting with the right hand at all. Okay, so that is really important. And the way you wanna practice this is begin at the third fret, this is a good way, and go. Make sure you get a clean chord, go to the C5, then go to the F5. Okay, so I have those so clean. The next thing you wanna do is to be able to play octaves, because octaves are in so many different kinds of songs, and you wanna be able to play those with no, with no other strings ringing. Okay, so this is an octave C, this is an octave G. 
what I'm doing is I'm playing it with my pinky and my index finger. So, once again, my index finger is muting the A string, right? And then my pinky is muting these other three strings. And you're probably thinking, well, how do you do that? You just have to practice getting the angle right of your finger. That's it. Right? Doing the same thing here uh, with, with a D octave, but I'm muting the low E string with the index finger as well. When you get to the octave here off the on the root four octave, so the note G, once again, the middle finger comes out to mute these two strings. The pinky mutes the high E. The index finger mutes the G string. And you're probably thinking, that's insane, right? You just have to get good at doing this. I would play this, and I'm doing the same thing with the uh, octave C here. Okay, so I've got C, C, mute, 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 mute. You should be able to You should be able to play all the strings with your strum and just hear the octave. The next thing you want to learn how to do is to play a single note anywhere and play all the other strings muted. Now, you'll hear that if you do a rake across the strings, you hear a lot of rock players We'll play just one note and they'll rake it and it'll give it a certain sound, right? You hear people like Stevie Ray Vaughan do that. The next thing you want to be able to do is to play single notes and mute all the other strings. This will involve both hands, typically. If I'm playing on the low E string, I can pretty much mute with whatever finger I'm using. I mute with the other, with the, uh, with the finger that I'm playing with, so. I'm muting with the index finger here, or with the third finger, I'm muting all the rest of the strings. I'm just playing the, the one note on the low string. Sometimes I'll mute with all the fingers behind it to make sure there's no, there's no extraneous notes. When I go to the A string, so then you want to move to the A string, right? And it's a very similar thing. But I'm using my thumb also to mute the low E string. So the index finger is muting all the rest of the strings. And the thumb is muting the low E string. This seems really complex because it is. But you need to be able to do this. You need to be able to isolate any string. Like here I played the note C. What I'm doing is I'm muting the string above, the D, right? And then muting the, the lower strings with the palm of my right hand. So I have this hand is muting the E, A, D. The index finger is muting the other two strings and the index finger is actually muting the D string too. So that is how you mute strings. You should be able to play octaves, power chords, single notes, with no extraneous strings ringing. That is really the mark of a pro player. And I would say the first thing to get down is just getting your power chords down, muting those strings. If you can get, if you can simply get those, if you can simply just get the root six, five, and four down, you're about three quarters of the way there. And then it's learning how to mute those other strings. But this is so important. It's the most important thing to making it sound like you're a pro player. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're a first time viewer, ring the bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when a new video comes out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. That's very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato Ear Training program at beatoeartraining.com. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.